Are you ready to take action to attain the lifestyle of your dreams? It's a great way to make a lot of money fast, fast, fast. The Clever Investor Show. Hey guys, welcome back to The Clever Investor Show. I'm your host, Cody Sperber, the OG Clever Investor. We're in the studio today, and this is going to be unlike any Clever Investor podcast we've ever put out. We have a very special guest, one of the most polarizing people in the real estate space. Lots of people love him, millions. A few maybe can say hate him, but everybody watches him. We got Uncle G, the great Grant Cardone, back in the studio. Cody, thanks for having me, buddy. I appreciate it. You're in Love your, your studio, by the way. It's, yeah, it's thank awesome you. Last here, time we recorded, this is actually, you're, you're, you're coming back for a second time. And this one, you got we got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, okay. okay. But you're in my studio now. I was yeah, in your studio yeah, last yeah, time. Yeah. Um, I want to start off the show just kind of, I know you guys are doing a lot here in Arizona. Right. Right? Why, why are you in my backyard stealing all my real estate deals? What's going on here? Man, I tell you what, we I've, I've been trying to buy real estate here for three years now, and I haven't been able to, but I think this correction allows us an entry point. Um, we just hadn't been on to make sense of prices since probably uh, 19, and you know, maybe 20. And now we believe because of the way the debt market is and correction and uh, institutions having to get rid of some inventory that we'll be able to enter. But we just bought, we what, a year ago, we bought a deal in um, Kierland, big office complex. Uh, that we think we're going to do really well on. Yeah, Ryan was telling me about that. Um, so, so you guys first came here and you guys were, did, were you renting some space over in Scottsdale? By, yeah, by yeah. Uh, my partner, uh, Brandon Dawson at Cardone Ventures rented, I think, what, 20,000 square feet? We filled that up. I mean, we took capacity there. So I bought a building, 225,000 square feet in Kierland. Uh It was about 76% occupied. Bought it from Goldman for about a $20 million discount. Uh, we think we stole the property, 200 bucks a square foot for office. That's really cheap. But we're already, we were set, we closed. They had owned the property seven years and never got it above 76%. We closed and we were at 96% within uh, a week, seven days. So institutions really, they don't pay attention to their properties once they buy them, right? They're massive. Uh, the, the, they own massive portfolio and they just... Thousands and thousands of properties. They don't pay attention the way an the way an entrepreneur like yourself or myself would handle. So you guys just came in and got real aggressive with getting it tenants and putting yeah, tenants exactly. In? So we just uh, uh, while we were under contract, we had the agreement with Goldman to start marketing uh, for for uh, leases and started filling the building up. And and uh, so we're already pleased with that activity. And we'll expand ourselves into that building uh, to build out Cardone Ventures. Ten uh, X Health is over there. Uh, Cardone Capital will move in and we'll be bringing our Cardone training technologies team. Uh, now, over. I was driving and I saw a 10X health yeah. sign around a fence kind of uh, by yeah, Old yeah, Town. Yeah, yeah. Is that, that going to be right. like a that's facility? A, that's going to be a facility. And it, what's going to be in there? I can pop in there as a customer. You can pop in and, there and get an IV. You can pop in there and get uh, supplements, uh, uh, red light therapy. You could do a cold plunge while you're there. And who's running that? Uh, team, 10X health system team. Okay. Yeah. And uh, who's who was that one guy that was doing all the Gary Brecker? Gary, Gary Brecker is a partner in that company, yeah. and and uh, we bought that from him about three years ago. Made him a partner, and and uh, we're we're blowing that thing up. I think we added nineteen thousand customers in December. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. I I started doing the biohacking thing recently, and uh, you're looking great, man. You're looking all ripped up. You know, I it's dropping helped some out, weight. Oh, tremendous! Looking tremendous fresh. change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot, a lot of reasons for that, but getting just your levels checked and getting all your blood work done and just making sure that, you know, I got the ice bath and I'm doing the yeah. the red light therapy and all that fun stuff. And it, it really, I feel amazing. At 45 years old, I'm sleeping better than I've ever slept. I, I, I hope amazing. I look as good as you when I'm 45. Yeah, get out of here. Um, okay, so you got a lot going on here in, in town. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we have, what does what Brandon have in uh, employees? 220 employees. 220 plus we have another maybe 40 over there. We think that goes And that to, whole business model is investing in other businesses, like, like yeah, coaching the, the, other businesses. The, 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 the ventures business is an educational front end and then turns into a partnership. Like we're, we're not interested in the education so much. It's just, we we want to educate people to do things the way we do them to be sure there's a match on the culture, how we hire people, train people, educate people, the culture that's created. And then if there's a likeness uh, then we can, and and there's opportunity and some some possibility of scaling. Then we become a partner in that business. Do you think that's going to be bigger than the real estate business that you have? 
Uh, it's just going to be different. I don't think about things being bigger or, you know, that, you know, I love my real estate, dude. Don't, don't, don't even poke on it. So, um, will it be bigger? It's just going to be different, you know, and, and they both function extremely well together. Uh, the real estate's at about four and a half billion right now. The goal is to get that to 10 X that to $45 billion and then possibly go either public or turn it into a REIT. How many companies or, uh, funds, Family offices have $45 billion worth of real estate. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I know where that would put me on the top ownership list. I know where where that would. Like like top 10? Yeah, uh-huh, for sure. So not many. No, there, not There's many. not a bunch of people that have scaled well, there's, to that there, size. There's nobody. There's not very many people that have done what I've done, like it, it, without going to, to pension funds or, um, you know, high, what, uh, high net worth family offices or to go to equity partner like a Goldman or, J, or KKR or whatever. We've, we've never got any money from sovereign funds, pension funds, family offices, never taken a penny from anybody. So it's all everyday people like myself, regular people that maybe don't have the time, the energy or the resources or the know-how to go buy real estate. And we buy the, we buy the asset, as you know, and then backfill it with people that, that are like-minded. Now on the Cardone Ventures part, that's going to be much more explosive. Just, just phenomenal amounts of growth. We'll probably go public with that company at some point uh, by consolidating a bunch of companies together, like a bunch of HVACs or a bunch of dentists or a bunch of chiropractors, consolidating those and then taking them to the street and uh, turning it into a piece of paper. And I love talking business. I want to talk a lot more business with you, but there's a lot going on out there right now. Yeah. On social media, out of nowhere, I open it up and I see a giant article, I think in the New York Post, saying that you have a $100 million defamation lawsuit against the old T-Mobile CEO, John Legere, or Leisure. Mm -hmm. And um, I read that and I went, wow, because I remember the battle on Clubhouse mm. vividly. Oh, you do? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Who, it, what, it, do you, what do you it, remember here in, in that battle? Well, interested. I remember, I remember first off, there was a lot, Clubhouse started off really great, mm -hmm. really great. And it kind of devolved into- Animal House. Animal House. <laughs> and it was just, I, I was already, I loved it at first, but I was starting to already get this feeling of like, it's starting to get toxic. Everybody's yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of getting yeah. more vicious and almost like racism going on in there, yeah, reverse yeah. racism and, and accusations and all this stuff was happening. So I was yeah. kind of like starting to fade out. And then all of a sudden I heard you guys in a room uh -huh. and you guys were just like cats going at each other. And it, but well, actually let me, let me clarify. You were kind of actually calm through the conversation. Uh -huh. He was coming at you pretty aggressively. Uh -huh. And I remember that happened. I remember thinking there was a couple moments where I was like kind of cringing Feeling like, wow, that was uncalled for. That wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. Things that- Like what? What did you hear him say? Well, I don't think that it was good that he was attacking like you donating to religion or, yeah. or your Scientology yeah. or something yeah. like yeah. that. I thought, hey, what does it have to do with anything? Yeah. Him accusing you of being a billionaire or not being a billionaire. Mm. Uh, calling you a con artist, a scam, uh -huh. all these things. And I was waiting for the proof. I was waiting for the, okay, where, where, are, you go where are you going with this? Okay. And I, look, anybody who's as public as you, as loud as you, has as big a brand as you, people are going to put a target on your back. It's going to happen, right? I wanted to know how legitimate any of his claims were. And it never, there was never any proof that came behind all of the accusations. And I felt like you kind of handled yourself fairly well throughout the whole thing. You yeah, stayed thank calm. You, thank you. You just kept saying, how do you know? Yeah. What are you, where are you coming from? Yeah. You know? So I want to ask just point blank. Yeah. First off, on the simple side of things, are you a billionaire? Well, look, I mean, I, you know, first of all, let me, let me just go back a second because I want for the record, I can't comment on the ongoing litigation. I can tell you it's very real, despite what some other people might be saying. It is very real. It's very serious. I had no alternative. I reached out a number of times and said, look, you need to knock this off. It's gone too far. Um, you're getting to the point where this is defamation. It is slanderous. It is untrue. It is false. You have no data to support any of this. If you do, please show it to me. And uh, on multiple occasions, he told me, you're right, dude. I don't know what I was doing, blah, blah, blah. I won't do it anymore. And then something would happen. Uh, and it happened more and more. 
And it continued to happen to the point where I'm like, okay, I got to protect myself so I have no alternatives. So I, that's all I can say about that particular thing, instant. Uh, regarding whether I'm a billionaire or not, okay? I'll, I could just do the math for everybody. Like on any given day, a net worth is going to change. We have $4.5 billion worth of real estate. This is just math. This is a public, public knowledge. Um, it doesn't really matter, by the way, whether a guy's a billionaire or worth $3 billion or $5 billion or he's worth $900 million or whatever because all that shifts and changes. But as you know, uh, the real estate has a value. There's $4.5 million worth of real estate today. Uh, we billion. Have, billion. 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 Yeah. yeah what did I say? Million. Well, that's crazy. So uh, that's what I have. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I knew so, what you meant. So, and, and look, I started with uh, uh, my first deal was seventy eight thousand dollars. So, like, I couldn't believe that I had seventy eight thousand dollars worth of real estate. Where I'm at today is it, it boggles my mind. Um, there's two point two billion dollars worth of debt, so that means there's two point three billion dollars worth of equity there. I do have partners in that. Uh, we have a training and education business, one that did $150 million last year, $155 million of gross. It has a margin of about 45%. Do the math on what that is. If we could take it public, uh, use your imagination. Uh, if you're an accounting person or if you've been on, in publicly, if you ran a $140 billion company, the way the gentleman you mentioned earlier did and had an accounting background and he's Ivy League educated, you could do the math on that and say, okay, well, the real estate's $2 billion. The educational business is doing 150. It's netting 45 to 60 million a year. The ventures business will do probably $47 million of uh, EBITDA this year. The health business is doing $45 million a year in its third, its third full year. Uh, so, the health business, nobody can tell me the health business isn't going to sell. I know it is. I mean, we already have interest. We were negotiating another educational platform uh, in November, December. It's a $3 billion company. So put those things together that, that all have to be validated. You can't go online and tell people you have $4.5 billion worth of real estate and not have $4.5 billion worth of real estate. I publicly crowdfunded $1.2 billion over the internet. You can't say these things when I have the SEC literally documenting every fund that I've ever done, okay? Like literally, they, they, these guys watch every single thing I do. And they should, by the way, because they're protecting investors from scams, from people that don't uh, maybe um, manage money correctly, that, you know, double dip. And so, so anytime somebody starts making claims about what I'm not, okay, well, prove it to me. It's not my job to answer your questions. It's you, you, you can't... You just can't simply, with a with a major in accounting, running, as this gentleman knows, running a $140 billion company, reputation matters, trust matters. You cannot go on an audio platform or any platform for that, for that point and just start saying, that's not true and you're this and you're that and you're that, including you're a pedophile. Like, this, this is insane. So you, I don't, you were called that? Yeah, uh, by the same gentleman. So I, I don't I don't know what caused him to do that. I can just tell you that, you know, you probably remember some of those rooms where we were very friendly, raising money together, helping people, giving information. Thousands of people will come listen to a corporate Ivy League uh, CEO that has always had a big job on Wall Street, and me giving advice from the other end, self made, street hustle, grind it out, never been corporate. Uh, never connected to the Ivy Leagues, you know, barely got through college. Hearing advice from those two different parties, right? Help people with education or, hey, what's about, you know, uh, you, where do you guys stand on college? And I'm like, no, I'm telling you, it's a waste of time. And he supported it. I was against the vaccine. He was very pro-vaccine. Um, I was very supportive of Elon Musk. He, he hated Elon, like literally talked about how he hated him. And then what happened in November, the best I can understand, because everything flipped at some point, sometime after the vaccine. And he was, again, very pro-vaccine, believed in the boosters, was vehement. All these rooms are recorded, by the way, about people should go get vaccinated. Accused me of killing people because I was like, I don't think so. I don't want my kids vaccinated. I don't want to be vaccinated. That was just my personal choice. And it was not hostility for me. It was just, it was just a choice. And then sometime in November, 
sometime after the vaccine and then sometime November uh, 2022. I think he was publicly humiliated by Elon Musk when he threw in his name to be CEO on Twitter and Elon responded no. And that relationship switch, like that, his relationship with me helping, me and him helping people, working together to raise money, something flipped and he became vicious, vile, angry, um, and very uh, slanderous to my name, my brand, my reputation. So I, I just got to the point last week where I'm like, this is our only alternative. I hired a company. Uh, they believe we have a very, very good case that you don't, you can't just hide behind the second of the First Amendment and say, hey, it's my freedom of speech. It's my opinion. He's a public figure, blah, blah, blah. At some point, you cross the line and say, wait a minute, you're defaming a brand. He knows how important marketing is. He knows how important it is trust with an audience. And he knew he had the ability to damage trust. And he did. And so... Um, but you're a big public figure. Mm -hmm. People talk smack about you online all the time. That's different. That, where is talking, the line? Talk, talking then? smack. Yeah. It's, where it's a good where point. is the line then? When 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 I see Instagram pages like Baller Busters doing massive, you know, amount of posts, yeah. just totally coming after you, saying you're a con man and then you're a clown and you're all these things yeah. that that particular Instagram page focuses on, you know, like the guru space. Where's the line? Yeah, you, yeah. Are, are you gonna are you gonna go after pages like that? Well, my goal here is to one number one protect myself, my family, my brand, my business, my reputation, my investors, and our employees. All those people are affected. We have a thousand employees. We had hundreds of employees asking the question: Dude, "What's going on? Why are people saying this about you?" I had to tell, I had to tell my mom. I have to tell my sister. I have to tell my husband. Like it's not good. It's damage. Okay, we had. 13,000 investors, they're calling us saying, hey, I heard this. I saw this online. I saw a video. What's really going on there? So we know that damaged trust with people. And none of it's true, by the way. I just want to be very, very clear. None of what people are saying is has any uh, validity, zero. So number one, I'm protecting myself. Number two, my goal is to change and to affect, positively affect anyone from clickbaiting or building an audience on the back of somebody else's name by throwing in the, t the headlines, some gripping, uh, so-and-so is a fraud. So-and-so is, like, you can't, you can't just keep hiding behind, it's my opinion or I heard. We know people are building channels like this. The First Amendment right and the, the defamation, those laws were written before social media became what it is today. There was no... Uh, influencers. There was no content creators. There was no people drag. The term clickbait didn't exist. So my goal is to actually change this and protect all people uh, of that that where, where it goes too far, Cody. When when it's like somebody's going to just trash you without supporting documents, research, due diligence, uh, it's just going too far. So you recently went through a lawsuit with. What was it, Cardone Capital? Yeah, uh -huh. and you came out the other end of it, and yeah, won. Tw twice that was twice that was uh, withdrawn from the the courts, saying they, there was no premise that it was completely. So, what lessons did you learn going through that process? You know, well, the first lesson I learned was, that unfortunately, the system is stacked to kill the little guy, because if you didn't have the money and the resources, the time and the energy and the guts to defend yourself, you would just roll over and pay a penalty. I fought that for two years. It cost me uh, millions of dollars, over $10,000. The investment was 10 grand, two $5,000 investments. And it cost you millions of dollars. I spent to millions yourself. defending myself because I knew it was the right thing to do. Because nothing that was, nothing that was said that we did, we did. And nothing, no claims were proven. Every single claim that their side made was uh, uh, ended up uh, being thrown out. So I was waiting for that to clear up because all these clickbaiters, these influencers, these whoever they call themselves, whatever they're doing, uh, they're basically selling hate. And they're selling hate. Uh, it's I think it's envy related. It it is with the goal to monetize a channel and get paid by Google. Um. Uh. AdSense. But isn't there some benefit to you from all these YouTubers and people 
doing these videos about you, it's free marketing for free publicity. Can't you? No, can't somebody no. argue that it also is a benefit to you on the other end of the spectrum? I, I mean, I guess an idiot can argue anything, but there's no benefit to me, right? There's no benefit to me that if you want to talk about me, you should have me in the interview. Just ask me. I'm, I'm a completely transparent person. I'll, I'll, uh, there's no question I won't answer about my life. Every single character defect I have, I already know about. There's nothing you're going to pull on me. Hey, look what I found out about you. Yeah, I, I know that. I've already told people about that before you told me about that. So uh, if one of these groups wants to interview me, uh, talk about me, talk about my company or talk about our distributions or talk about how we raise money or talk about our company or talk about our products or talk about the su success ratios, in our education business, they should have me on their show talking about me. Otherwise, like Will Smith said, keep mm -hmm. my name out your mouth. And if you keep doing it, guess what? One day you're going to get slapped. And so that's, th this is the first of many that, that I will say, okay, um, you're going to stop. But many of these people aren't worth suing because they don't have anything. So all I would be doing is giving them attention. So you can't get blood from a turnip. What I'm doing right now, that turnip has blood, okay? And that, that individual, like somebody asked me the other night, they said, do you really think you'll win this? I said, no, I think I'll win more than this. Expand on that. I think that this, this is, you know, there's tremendous damage, financial damage done here that I can document and that I will be able to prove. And if you know anything about me at all, you know, Grant Cardone's got a big mouth. Grant Cardone stands up. Grant Cardone does uh, all the bullshit I said I would do, I have done. And this will be another one of those things I will do. You know, I will. And, and I'm doing it for you too, because when you get big enough, dude, they're going to come ch try to chop your head off. Well, they I've... go from me to, to John, to Bob, whoever's hot, whoever's, you know, whoever has any kind of success. It's crazy, but success attracts new cars and new houses and new trips and new experiences and new friends. And it attracts the other side too, haters and very envious people. Uh, so that's what I learned from that, that first lawsuit. The, the thing I'm learning from this cycle right now is, man, I never want to have, I never want to retire. I never want to be an old retired guy that did something three or four years ago and is not relevant today. And this is his only way of staying relevant. I've had that feeling of injustice where somebody accuses yeah. you of something that is absolutely not true. Yeah. And just with your integrity, you, you feel the obligation to stand up yeah. and, and fight. But for when yourself. my kids, my kids open up YouTube and they're like, Papa, what, why is this man saying this about you? Why is this man saying this about your church? Why is this man saying this, uh, saying you're a pedophile? My, my, my 12 year old daughter comes to me and says, Papa, there's a man on the internet that said, this other man said, you're a pedophile. Like, you, that, that's too far. You know, I don't think anybody approves of that. So let's say you work through this whole entire thing and you're victorious. Yeah. You're Grant Cardone. You're yeah. victorious. Yeah. Okay. Another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 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 now you kind of set a standard, a precedent yeah, I would in love our to. industry. I would love to set a standard, man. Wouldn't you like that? I think it would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be great as long as you can back up any claims that anybody makes against you it, it, and i'm assuming because if somebody says being that in you're the real a fraud, estate space if but but i think the law should say this yeah you, you have freedom freedom of speech but the moment you start saying somebody is a fraud you need to provide documentation to that fraud then you could say he's a fraud because if it's true it's not defamation it's the truth but you can you cannot say somebody's a fraud I, did you see the video i did with the uh, reporter from real deal Actually, yes, I did. Yeah, the 38-minute yeah. video. Okay, yes. so Jared was with me. I said, he's, Jared's like, what are you about to do? I said, I'm about to do a, a phone call with a reporter. He's like, not that guy again, huh? Dude, that guy's trashing you all the time. Same kind of bullshit, right? And I got him on the phone, and for 38 minutes, Jared said, there's no way, I'm looking at Jared right now, there's no way this guy's going to answer all these questions. For 38 minutes, he answered every question I had. And at the end of it, I said, hey, Francisco, what would you do if you were me and people were reporting false things about you? He's like, I would do exactly what you're doing. Like he literally says that at the very end, right? And, um, and he covered this story, this more recent story that you're talking about. He just covered it yesterday. So the, the point of this is, guys, you, can, you have to stand up for yourself. 
Okay. You don't want to give attention to people that are just doing it to get attention. So there's a fine line, right? Some of these people that you mentioned, I never talk about them because I never want to give them any attention because they're, 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 they're bottom feeders. They're completely, they will never do anything in their life. It's impossible. Nor will their audience ever monetize, nor will they ever have sponsorship. Because nobody's going to sponsor a channel that's filled with hate. Ever. It won't yeah, happen. but you got to understand on some level, you see a guy straddling uh, the engine of a jet, yeah. right? It's loud. It's boisterous. It's yeah. marketing. You're, you're, yeah. you're throwing your wealth in people's face. Yeah. And, uh -huh. and then they see at the, uh, that's, that's on this side. And then on this side, it's buy my course. And on this side, it's give me money to buy real estate. This is natural for humans to be a little skeptical of a yeah, guy of course. with an extravagant lifestyle yeah. and then turn around and say, give me money. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, these channels. 100%. Me on the front of a Rolls, you know, doing this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, if that's. A but that, that, doesn't, that doesn't give people a right. So, where's the line? I guess is yeah. what we're the, trying to figure the, out. The, like, the, I, the, the, you cannot, the line is in the law. You cannot defame or slander someone without facts. You cannot say without facts. I can't say Hunter Biden had prostitutes and paid for them and then, 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 charge the IRS illegally unless there's facts. In this case, I can say Hunter Biden was with prostitutes, bought a gun because it's proven that he did. So that's not defaming an individual. That's not slander. That's the truth. But when you make a claim, if I make a claim about you, I saw Cody uh, have sex with a young boy uh, behind, his real, behind his office. Uh, that is defamation and slanderous. It is damaging your reputation. Can we please brand. get you? Say, I'm trying to get my hundred million dollar lawsuit on against you, you want me, Uncle you, G. Come on, can we? Yeah, can we but, get something but, but, public. But, you going? know, that's the other thing. Like, like the little guy. You see, the little person out there, and that's who I'm fighting for here. Is, can never ever the resources it takes to defend yourself are immense. Not to mention the energy and the you know, the creativity and the space it takes. Like I'm running businesses and I now got to yeah. deal with this. Well, th th this is something I have to do as a father, as a leader to protect my own brand. My dad told me when I was eight years old, I would lose him two years later. He said, the most important thing, son, the most important thing you have in your life is your name. And so that's what I'm protecting. So before you filed this lawsuit, did you sit your family down and- Oh yeah, 100%. Just had like a family we all talked about and, it. And what'd your kids- think about it. Uh, Sabrina said, absolutely, you should do this. She she was in rooms with this guy. Okay. He, he you know, they had a relationship. They, they, she, he, she, he, he admires Sabrina and talked very encouragingly to her, even suggested, I'm going to give you a million dollars when I die. He lo absolutely loved Sabrina and said, when he dies, he's going to leave her with a million dollars. Okay. And Sabrina had a relationship with this man. And then all of a sudden something flipped somewhere after the vaccine, um, somewhere after the Elon thing, something happened. And this guy went, it went weird. And it went beyond the point after me asking him multiple times, please don't do it. And him agreeing not to. So she's like, absolutely should do this to protect us, not just you. All right, let's lateral over a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a successful person ever go on to another grown man's Instagram or grown man's anything and leave hateful comments. If you're successful, you just don't lead with all that negative, toxic stuff. Just, just to, I think it's a good standard for people to hear. If you're online and you're leaving comments on other entrepreneurs' pages that are negative and toxic, you need to knock it off. Like, it's just a horrible standard for our space. Yeah. I see it happening all the time. And, they, and I don't know, maybe there's a lesson in there you could talk about of just like how successful people actually roll. Do you know successful people that are like chit chatty and, and talking negative about each other behind each other's backs and then leaving hurtful I, I, comments publicly? Because none of my friends do that. Yeah. I've eliminated all those people from my life yeah, long yeah. time it's ago. Always, it's always below you. Yeah. You know, the hate comes from below you. It doesn't come from above you. People don't, you don't hate down. You know, why would I hate Elon Musk? It's just not attractive. So, you know, those people that hate up, there's something going on inside of them that's broken. I'm out hustling every day, dude. I'm working every day. You know, I can't even imagine the pain of being, leaving a company and being relevant. And then for the next three or four or five years, I've lost my relevance, my connections, my network, my purpose, 
the things I'm working on. I'm like, what am I doing every day? I can't even imagine not working. I, ma- I, I guess that's what happens. You get bitter and you get envious and you get jealous. And I don't know. I don't know what happened for him. I just know what, what th- that's the lesson I'm getting out of this. Stay busy, stay on purpose, stay so busy. You don't have time to, to co- like, how could I have time to comment on one of your posts? If I'm a comment, I'm going to hit a big like. I'm going to say, awesome, Cody. Kill it, Cody. You're the man, Cody. I'm, I'm not going to take time to piss on you. So many of our listeners reach out and they ask us how they can get involved in my actual real estate deals. Our investment firm specializes in finding deeply discounted properties, acquiring them, renovating, stabilizing both single family and multifamily properties all over the United States. That's why we're so excited to share with you clevercapitalfund.com. Now, if you have some investment capital and you want to deploy it and receive double digit returns back by real estate, then visit our website and see which fund is right for you. We have both equity funds and we have debt funds where you just get paid out every month like clockwork. All you got to do is visit www.clevercapitalfund.com today to learn more. I guess that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Is just, yeah. just, just, I, I just move on. I would way. move yeah, on. Su- so successful people don't act that way. No, no, it's ticks and fleas, man. Yeah. All right. So, um, Let's talk about one other little scandal that kind of went kind of crazy. Um, and I don't really know a lot about it, but I did hear about it. Um, there was some- I don't know about this one. I'm, the, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Well, this is Drum just- roll. I'm, Yeah, there I'm, was I'm just curious, some, what's gonna some happen. racism stuff, maybe some things that you said that maybe people took out of context. Uh-huh. I, I don't even remember the exact thing you said, but something about- selling to a certain segment of a, oh of a community. Oh my God. See, see, that's another thing, right? Okay, so I was on the Laura Trump show. And Laura said, my father-in-law and myself were having a conversation. That's Donald J. Trump, next president of the United States. Okay. We were talking about you and we were asking, how did this guy build this massive audience? And then she said, your audience is so diverse. Like she, uh, she said, when my father-in-law was in your deal, he couldn't believe how many different people from how many different walks of life were there. From super successful, uh, one guy on the front rows worth, I don't know, four or $500 million to somebody in the room that's just getting started. Black, brown, white, male, female, 22 years old, 62 years old, just a very broad, diverse audience. And she said, how do you do this? And I said, well, I target groups of people. You know, transparent grant. I don't think about what I'm saying. I'm not going to filter it. I target groups of people. So we, we, we speak to different groups where they are. Like if a kid's 14 years old, I talk to him different than if he's 24 years old, black, brown, white, male, female, they're all different groups and they should be spoken to differently. And so some, some, somebody in the black community grabbed that, cut the two pieces and said, Grant Cardone is targeting the black audience and building his business uh, with black money. And I'm like, okay, so... All right, about 40% of my, my 16 million followers are black and under the age of about 40 years old. Massive, big, big. We don't even really even know how we attracted that audience, except for the fact that maybe I'm talking about money every day. I'm talking about hustle. I'm saying you don't have to go to school. You don't have to go to college. I'm telling you how to get the grind on. You don't have to be a ball player. You don't have to be a rapper. You don't have to commit a crime. You could actually start a business, be a business, et cetera. And somebody took that out of context, mixed the two pieces, and then wants to make it look like I'm targeting people. By the way, as I look straight at the camera, I am targeting you right now, right? I am because that's what you do with good marketing. You target certain audiences and then provide products and services to handle those people. Last thing I want to say on that is less than 5% of the people that pay me are that demographic. So if you guys think I got rich off the back of any community, you're wrong. I've gotten rich off of that many people out of that many. So about 20%, less than 20% actually, of all the people that see any of my stuff uh, actually monetize and pay us. That was a good answer. Tiny, yeah, like maybe it. one, uh, maybe a half of 1% invest money with me at Cardone Capital. Okay. And all of them are happy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little secret. Okay. When that first, that lawsuit happened with the, the 10,000 bucks, nobody knows this, but I, I got something said this, this, uh, group, this guy's unhappy. Uh, they're fine. They're 
doing a class action lawsuit. By the way, class action, how many people do you think is involved in a class action lawsuit? More than one. This was one. Wait, how does that work? And they continue to talk <laughs> about you it for two like years. A you think people. thousands, right? Yeah. So I know the there's a lead plaintiff, but you would think there'd be others. Yeah, there was never uh, others. Okay. And so, so I went on, I went on, uh, we sent an email out to 13,000 investors. At that time, I think there was like 8,000 investors. Uh, and I sent an email out to 8,000 people and said, Hey guys, the special briefing, very important, show up for a meeting tonight on Zoom. Um, they showed up on Zoom and I said, there's a class action lawsuit being filed against me. This was 8,000 investors that had already invested in Cardone Capital. I said, I want to give you guys a heads up before you see it online. There's there's a class action lawsuit of one, two $5,000 investments. This guy's, we tried to give him his money back. He doesn't want it back. He wants to sue. I said, okay, whatever. I said, any of you that want to join this lawsuit, let me give you the link. Okay. How many of the 8,000 do you think joined the class action lawsuit? Zero. Nobody did. Yeah. My lawyer thought I was crazy. So you sent them the link. I said, I said, here it is. If you want to join, join. So you just went on the offensive. Yeah, right away. Yeah. yeah. My lawyer told me not to do it, but. And I also called the guy that was doing the deal and they said, don't call the guy. I said, why not? Let's, let's communicate. Let's talk about it. What are you not happy about? And the guy's like, I'm happy with the investment, man. My lawyer said this was the right thing for me to do because he had been at this other event, the company that you know, this company, company hired me to go in and speak. I spoke. They sold him something. I didn't sell the kid anything. They sold him some $20,000 package, never delivered on it, filed bankruptcy. So when the lawyer was saying, hey, can we go? He, he, the kid was trying to get his 20 grand back. And I'm probably not even supposed to be talking about this, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, the kid couldn't get his 20 grand back from this group out of Utah. You know who I'm talking about. And um, they were under investigation. So the lawyer's like, we're never going to get your 20 grand back from this group because they filed bankruptcy and they've been folded and shut down. But who's this Grant Cardone guy and what have you done with him? Because that guy, that guy's got some money. And that's what lawyers do. The ambulance chaser, they don't, they don't, they don't sue people that don't have money. They sue people that are liquid and have, have resources and wherewithal. Wow. And all that ended up in millions of dollars worth of legal fees. Just yeah, but so that's part of the name. game, man. You just yeah. got to, you got to fund, you gotta, a, if you guys are going to grow and expand, the thing you got to do is you got to have a, have a legal Unfortunately, have a legal bucket and and fund the legal bucket, knowing someday, one day, some somebody is going to try to take a run at you. Yeah, it's a success tax, and it's it's yeah. sick too, dude. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let's talk money. Let's mm -hmm. let's shift over from that. You know, this, let's get on the positive. Yeah, yeah. First off, thank you for being just raw and authentic, yeah. and just because I think everybody's talking about it right now. Everybody wants to understand what is going on. Where does the line draw? Yeah. You know, how aggressive are you going to well, be? I can I can tell you the response from the public has been unbelievable. Okay. In 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 forty eight hours, I have had hundreds of people hit me and say, "I was in those rooms. I heard that." It was outrageous. It is It is not right. It is not okay. It was too far. He should know better. And I don't blame you for doing exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It was too much. Yeah. It was too much. I mean, way Dude, too, much. One way thing, too much. Way too much. Me and you having a debate is one thing. Yeah. Okay. Me and you trashing each other right here saying, well, fuck you, John. You, you, da, 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 whatever, whatever. I should be able to call yeah. you anything. I call you to your face right here, right now. But the moment I turn and look at the camera and say something about you that is not true, I am no longer in a debate with you. I am trying to intentionally get this audience to believe something about you. If it's true, fine. If it's not true and you have no proof, it's not okay. All right. Let's talk positive. Let's talk, let's yeah. talk money. Everybody loves Uncle G because the money. They, they want to make money. They come to you a lot, lot. I don't even know how many millions of people have come through your world trying to learn how to better themselves. Um, right now, 2024, I'm a new real estate investor. Okay. I want to get in the game. Where should I focus? This is the best moment, man. This is your time. It's going to, you, you, first thing you got to do is you got to figure out where are you, right? Where do you live? If you live in Phoenix or you live in Philadelphia, it's different. If you live in Boston or Chicago or Miami, you got to know your little market. What's your little pocket look like? And then you got to know, like, focus on that real estate thing. This is the moment. Two years ago, you did not have the opportunity to take advantage of what's going on right now. And I, I believe, I really believe without being hyperbolic that this is the, this will end up being one of the great real estate corrections of our lifetime, if not the biggest one ever. 
And what, what, when you say that, what 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 are you seeing that others are it, it won't be in single family. So don't look at single family homes. You guys have to get your attention off of, I'm going to go buy a house cheap. You're not going to buy a house cheap. You're not going to get a house cheap. House prices are not coming down. It's not going to happen. I have the data that would support that it would never happen. About 90% of all the homes in this country are uh, either paid off in full there's $12 trillion worth, $12 trillion worth of equity sitting in homes today. And uh, of the 90% that have debt, those are probably at 5% or under. Until rates breach 5%, those people will not trade those homes. It's, pain, it's just too painful to trade. Um, so I don't think that, th I don't think there's a reason. I don't think that there's a reason for anybody to get out of their home and take a loss on it. And, and we have a shortage of homes. I just go on and on and on. You, you got a shortage of homes of at least four or five million homes. And then you have another 40 million homes in this com, com, uh, country that are just simply undesirable. Nobody's going to ever want to buy them because they were built in 1980. They have eight foot ceilings, popcorns up there, uh, old refrigerator, uh, old, old everything, uh, antiquated air conditioning heaters. Those, those homes need to be torn down. They don't need to be rehabbed. So there's a massive, massive shortage in America of housing. Compare that to, let's say... Uh, Dubai. Dubai's got an unbelievable surplus of homes. I don't know what the number is. Hundreds of thousands. Go to China. They have 140 million, 140 million, half of the American population. They have vacant condos in China. Okay. That, that will never, ever be filled. So we don't have that. We have a, sh a housing shortage. Now, on the flip side of that, where the opportunity is, is in multifamily, these big apartment complexes, um, I think to a less degree, two units, three units, and four units, the duplex, the triplex, and the fourplex. But I think there will be opportunity there. Uh, definitely office is going to be a massive opportunity. I'm contrarian in it. I believe in office. I think it's a good place to go. I think people are going to make some unbelievable um, scores with office, buying them 30% of what, the, what they were worth at one time. Uh, and they will cash flow. And I think that there'll be some opportunities in um, retail. Well, last time we were talking, you were pushing me pretty hard to get out of single family. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. You were like, yeah. you, you, you gave me a little challenge. And since Did then, you? yeah, of course. Was it good? Well, it's it's been, I mean, it's ongoing, but yeah, yeah. I just I just purchased two banks. Good. Old bank buildings. Yep. Yeah. Good. So that those are my first. Oh yeah, I saw you walking through the vault. Yeah, yeah. yeah those are my yeah, first two yeah. bank buildings. We just closed on them uh, last week. And so that's been kind of exciting, like trying to figure out like how to monetize and make money from those commercial buildings. Lots. I really like the that space. And I think now that we have two and we closed and we performed, yeah. they're starting to bring us a lot more opportunities now. And I, I really like that because it's very high traffic in front of banks. They normally have great real estate and there's a lot of... Uh, businesses that want that real estate. So it's, it's, it's been fun to learn that. Uh, we bought a multifamily building. I, I jumped in with uh, Vina Jetty oh, good. last year good. at the end of last year. Vina. It was a 432 unit. And so we put wow. a bunch of money into that. Yeah. So that, where's that? Uh, right here in okay. Arcadia. Yeah. Yeah. It's a class B institutional grade. It was yeah. one of our bigger ones. And um, we assumed a 2.97% uh, blended average yeah. interest rate for 11 years. Seven Beautiful, of it man. is Beautiful. interest only, if I yeah. can remember. Which was good debt, and yeah. they're great managers, and so far everything's been really good with that project. Uh, it, what are the rents there? Mm, like between, if I I'm going off memory, yeah, yeah like between yeah. like sixteen hundred to two twenty okay. one hundred, okay. something like that. Oh wow, yeah, there, it's nicer. It's yeah, a nicer. Sounds like a good deal. It's in a good area. Yeah. Arcadia is right up against yeah, the sky. Fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, but we wound down a lot of our single family stuff. I'm down to my last two projects. We, mm -hmm. we respect building at the time and we are down to our last two. One just sold and the other one's for sale. And who knows? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reload the single yeah. family. It's gonna keep yeah. pushing on the commercial. It's it's been good. So well, you, I appreciate you, that challenge. Yeah, you just have more exits, right? But with, with a single family, you gotta buy it and sell it. Well, with a single family, so out of my last four three single families. I, I built three of almost identical houses. One, we made 90 grand. One, we made no grand. Uh -huh. And one, we made 200 grand. This yeah. is after like 18 to 24 months of building these things. Yeah. It was our first yeah, round good. of two stories. Do you mean two years of worrying about two, it? Two years of worrying about it and only is to it, make 290 it work? grand. What's going to happen? I mean, to, to slip out after the market corrected yeah. Yeah. and only make 290 grand is actually not, I mean, it's a loss for us. Like, because yeah. we could have 
spend our time doing one bank and make two and a half million dollars. Yeah, right, right. And we are over here messing around with these single And see, that's what I've been saying to people for years and everybody starts hating on me because, oh, Grant Cardone wants me to go straight to the big stuff. Yeah, I actually do want you to go. I mean, if I'm going to go fishing, you know, don't you want to catch a big one? I think I mean, fear, fear though, holds a lot yeah, of people yeah, back. Yeah, they can't, yeah. you know, most people, look, this, the stats are the stats. The average American makes $59,340 a year. Yeah. They have $1,000 a year they might save. Yeah. They have $101,000 worth of consumable debt, $9,000 worth of high interest credit card debt. They can't even fathom buying a big commercial deal. Like they're just trying to survive. Yeah. And so when they hear somebody like you say that, it freaks them out a little bit, right? They're like, How? How would I, that disconnect is, is yeah. there. So I'm always looking for like the, okay, well, what's the path? I'm an, I'm that guy. How do I so get look, into you, the big you, stuff? First thing you'd have to do is you got to change your mind. You got to be like, okay, whatever you're doing right now is not working. Whatever advice that you have, whoever trained, educated you, whatever environment you've been in has you thinking that $59,100 is your top and that your consumer debt is a, a you know, is your trap and that, you're never going to get out. I mean, I can't help you if you don't think you're going to get out. I can't help you. You Nobody can help you, by the way. Like, you got to decide, I'm fucking getting out of this situation. I, I cannot live like this anymore. And then you have to take responsibility. Like, I did at 25 years old when I had a drug problem. I'm like, I am the problem. I couldn't blame it on my daddy, losing my daddy when I was 10. I'm like, I'm the problem. I don't have an addiction. I have a problem with drugs. And I have to stop the drugs. I had to become accountable. I had a debt problem. I had an income problem. I had a learning problem. Those were my problems. I blame it on whatever title label you want. It was me. And it didn't get any better until I said, hey, I'm the problem here. And then I started self-educating and started unlearning what I believed to be true that actually wasn't true. There was no shortage of money. Nobody was trying to keep me out of the game. And I started studying. And so the, the you know, the thing the kid in Philadelphia should do right now, I don't have any money. I don't have any credit. Okay. But what do you have? I got a commitment. I got hustle. I got energy. Go learn. And that's what I would do. And I would, I would, you know, if I was buying real estate right now today in 2024, I would go look for 32 unit deal. That would be my minimum number of units. And I would look for 32 units where the rents were too low. I would not worry about how I'm going to buy it. Not, wouldn't even not, I would have no attention on how am I going to pull this off? Okay. I would just get myself on the field and hope somebody throws me a ball. And then I'll be like, fuck, I got to figure out how to catch a ball. And then I'm going to run like hell. And that's how you're doing in real estate. You're trying to catch a deal. You're trying to catch a specific deal that is easily explainable to somebody where I could say, this is 32 units. The rents are only 800. They should be 1200. When I raise them from eight to 1200 and they should be 1200 without me doing anything, I'm not going to spend a penny. Okay. Uh, the value of that 32 units will be $1 million more than we paid for it. And then I got to figure out how to chop it up with the other guy. Look, there's dentists, doctors, chiropractors that don't have the time to invest in real estate, but most of them would love to. But they can't find the deal, fund the deal, manage the deal, collect the rents, fix it, handle the evictions. They, they want nothing to do with that. There's plenty of people out there. There's uh, you know probably 250 million people in America that are not happy with what their checking account is paying them, which is under 1%. And they want to do better. So you're a young hustler. You go, you go find the good deal. The the money. I always tell people in real estate, you know, the money is going to be attracted to a great deal. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult to. to a bring great in deal the money. is like this hot chick walking into the club. Yeah, everybody's going to look at her. Okay, everybody. Uh, a hot guy walks in there. Same the same people that looked at the hot chick. Some guy walks in the club. Man, he's all, you know, he looks good. Everybody's going to look at him too. Uh, 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 attention will follow things that look beautiful. Great location. It's already filled. There's a great story. There's already got income. Not only will money follow that deal, debt will follow the deal. A great deal will attract debt, even in a bad debt market like we're in right now. Like we're doing a deal in, I'll send you the image to this deal. It's called uh, NEMA, N-E-M-A in Chicago. It's 800 units, 76 floors. It's in front of Grant Park. So I took that as a... That's a sign. Grant Park's yep, right here. It's a Grant, good sign. Check it out. Grant Park's right here and Soldier Stadium's over here. So I'm like, dude, I'm a soldier and that's Grant Park on Michigan Avenue. It would cost $700 million to build this building. 
And I think I buy this for under $400 million. And it'll be cash flow positive day one. What's your biggest purchase you guys have ever made? Uh, I did four deals uh, in 21. I did four deals in December 21 that were a total of, what was that? $700 million worth of debt. So about a billion two. In four deals. But would a $400 million deal be your biggest? Yeah, it would be my single biggest. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And when you guys are approaching something like that, like it, when I look up at like, uh, I was just in Miami and I look up at the buildings and I'm like, I'm always thinking like, who owns that? Exactly. Who the hell owns that? And how, do, how if I owned it, how would I manage that? Yeah. Like, how would I do? You, you're just- you, you, you would manage it easier with less, you know- Than me building my shitty houses over here? Is that what you're trying no, to say? No, like, like I, <laughs> yeah, I don't do, like I was on Kiyosaki. I, I, I did 20 minutes on Kiyosaki's show before he got upset with me. And yeah, I saw show. that. It's weird, man. But he, but, but he's like, oh, you're trying to talk everybody into big deals. I'm like, yeah, dude, they're easier. He's like, management is the number one problem. I'm like, yeah, they're, I own 12,000 units. They're, they're not a management problem when you own 12,000 units. It's somebody else's problem. Just not yours. It's not my problem. I'm the yeah. investor. I'm the investor operator on the deal. I pick it, fund it, find it. I hire a management company to take care of the bullshit. Do you have any deals that are going south? No, I don't have any deals going south because I have 10 years on all my deals. Now, have values come down? Because, yeah, of course, values come down when debt expands. When debt goes this way, the value of the building is going to go that way. There's there's only been in, in, in America, real estate typically has this long line of stability over 40 or 50 years. Uh, Warren Buffett and, and um, uh, the old man that died, Charlie Munger. Charlie talked about why he hated real estate because it's too stable. This is what he says. You should ch uh, check out Charlie Munger in real estate, commercial real estate. He's like, we don't like real estate because it's too stable. The only time it gets interrupted, 1996, 2000, uh, 2008, and now 2024, the only time it gets disrupted is when the debt market, there's always a debt collapse before there's a real estate um, contraction. And that's what we're in right now. This will last about, it's, we're probably already into the 18th month of this cycle of contraction in, in debt. Uh, and then it takes about another 18 months for the prices to pull back. So there's $2.7 trillion worth of debt coming due right now, 700 billion a year. Like that number is so massive. I think that this, this will pull banks down with it and some institutions and some pension funds. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen, but even if it happens, this real estate will still be standing the only thing that's going to change is the ownership. The building will still be there, but the next owner will buy it for less than the last owner paid for it and possibly less than the amount of debt that was funded on it. So we don't, we have, we, uh, we, we distributed last year in the last 24 months, 100 million, a little over a hundred million dollars in cash to our investors. We're not looking at the values every day. We're looking at the distributions of cash. Uh, we did $7.6 million in December. $6.2 million in um, November and every single month before that, we did somewhere between three and a half and $5 million in distributions. So even if the value is coming down, as you know, I'm still getting cash flow until I wait out the location being better because rents will increase over, over time and somebody else will find that desirable. We're not really sellers though, Cody. Like, like my portfolio, if I never sell 80 or 80, 85% of it will probably never be traded. Clever investor. That's pretty smart. Do you pay taxes? I try not to. I try not to pay federal taxes. I, I don't know why anybody would pay the IRS to fund a war. Why, why would you guys do this? Why would you guys earn money and pay a, a, a corrupt government to then attack other people in other parts of the world because that's all taxes do is they fund wars so i'll do everything i can not only to not pay taxes but to get a refund every year now i pay a lot of property taxes we probably paid last year we probably paid uh see this is the kind of stuff that pisses people off the fact that I would tell people what I paid in property taxes, that I would be that transparent. So on two, uh, on four billion, we probably paid last year eighty million in property taxes, somewhere shy of that. 
But that's the local communities. I've got a property in Orlando, in Tampa, Miami. I'm, I'm going to support the local community, the roads, hospitals, fire, firemen, policemen, et cetera, with my property taxes. But why should I send that money to Joe Biden and the FBI? You know what I'm saying? When you make a hundred million dollars over in your education world, yeah, but yeah. you own all this real estate over yeah, here, yeah. are you able to take your, and I already know the answer. I'm just asking mm-hmm. for you guys. Mm-hmm. Are you able to take your real estate depreciation and your write-offs and yeah. all that stuff and apply it towards your earned income over yeah, here? Yeah, I can and everyone else can, by the way. All you have to do is, is qualify as a professional real estate investor, as you know, 15 hours a week of education or uh, research on real estate or managing real estate, buying real estate, working in the real estate, qualifies a professional real estate agent. 15 hours is 750 hours a year so that you can now not pay the 35 or 42% to the IRS. So if you make, like I, t- I was telling my kid the other day, one day you're going to have a job that pays you 200 grand. What you're gonna, she's like, what am I going to do with that money? I said, you're going to invest all that 200 grand in a piece of real estate. The quality of your life is never going to get better until the real estate you have is paying you to improve the quality of your life. You're not going to use earned income to improve the quality of your life. You're going to take the 200 grand, you're going to invest it in a piece of real estate, as much of it as you can. Live with me as long as you want. I like you. And and then and then that 200 grand is going to come with probably, I don't know, three or $400,000 worth of depreciation against the 200 you earned. You're going to have a job as whatever. Maybe she's going to be a congressman. And she's also going to have a real estate license or real estate uh, professional categorization or whatever it's called with the IRS so that she can offset the 200 with the depreciation and not pay taxes. Um, if she was a congresswoman, then that would only be her first year because by the time she got out, she'd be worth $100 million. Yeah, Isn't that dude, what happens to all of them? Like, dude, how, all of a sudden, does, they just magically make a gazillion dollars? How, 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 I've done the math on this. For, for what's Pelosi, whatever her name is, Nancy? It's probably, is that your aunt? Is big, we call her Big N. Okay, so Big N. So Big N makes $179,000 a year. She's been in Congress for 40 years or something. She is worth, I think, 130 or $40 million. 290, I'm sorry, 290 million. It would take 33,000 years. Okay, she would have had to been born before the Great Pyramids or something and earn that much money every year. For her to be worth that today. Somehow she's a magically good stock investor. I heard. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you know, it's against the law to be an insider trader on Wall Street, but the good news is it is not against the law to be an insider trader on real estate. You can talk, give, give me all the details of everything going on. You could tell me about a deal you're buying. You could tell me the good, the bad, the ugly. I can decide to do the deal with you, and that's not illegal. That's beautiful about real estate. All right. Well, Let's kind of end on uh, uh, who who inspires you. Who are you looking at? You right inspire now? me, Cody. And damn, isn't that the right answer? Can we get this clip to go viral? This is the viral clip of the whole I- interview. Dude, look, anybody, this is the only one that needs to go. Look, look, I'll tell you, there's a number of people that inspire me. First of all, anybody that's ever done anything successfully. Uh, Muhammad Ali is one of my great inspirations. You know, when I when I saw him say no to Vietnam, I was so inspired by that, dude. I was a young kid. I was like, God damn, dude standing up against the man. Um, when, when I, you know, I see Mike Tyson when Mike was in his, in his prime and the way he, the way he tore people's heads off Iron Mike, man, I was like, God damn, I love that shit. You know what I mean? He just destroyed people. When I saw him fall, you know, and then come back. I remember I was with Mike the other night and I remember after he got his tattoo, remember when he got his face tattoo? The whole world went crazy, man. Like, what's wrong with this guy? I saw him two days later on Sunset Boulevard in in Hollywood. And I wasn't inspired by him then because I thought he was nuts. But what he's done to rebuild himself and come back and become relevant again is inspirational to me. Donald Trump inspires me. You know, I like I like that the old man just keeps fighting. So those people all inspire me, you know, all the way back to, you know, the anybody that's done anything great inspires me. The guy catching the big pass inspires me. It doesn't take a lot to inspire me, you know, just do something successful. Now, the other people that inspire me are these, these, these haters, you know, they, they, they inspire me, man. Like I would not be, I am not a self-made man. I am a hater made man. 
haters have made me so successful. Jared all the time, he knows it. Jared's with me right here. But um, when people hate on me and tell me I can't do it, you, you're doing this and you're never going to be that. And uh, I, had a, I had a guy, a partner I was working with when I was 35 years old. And I said, look, I'm going to cross over. I was in one industry. I said, I want to cross over. He was promoting me around the country as a public speaker. And I said, I want to speak to everyone. And he's like, you'll never do it. Nobody ever pulls it off, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Well, that guy's been an inspiration for me for 30 years. So all you guys that are hating on me, you know, talking about people behind my back and your bullshit, and the bankruptcy video I did. And you guys are like, we, we saw so many people that we thought were supporting us that when that bankruptcy video, what was that? 2000? 2021. Wasn't that right when COVID hit? COVID hit, yeah. It was March 21. Which was a brilliant marketing move. It was not a marketing way. move. That was not a marketing move. That was a joke. Well, I looked, maybe I'm just got that it was a joke, like dude. How, how to break, Here's what happened. break okay. the internet. But. We, we left, I, I left Undercover Billionaire. I was shooting that show. It was a day after I got back from Pueblo. I was so pissed off at Discovery Channel for ending it. I'm like, no, do the show during COVID, dude. This is what the rest of America is going to have to do. They're going to have to figure out how to hustle their money during COVID. But they, they didn't want to take the risk. So I fly home. I meet with Jared. I said, Jared, man, the whole world's going to come to hell. I'm a very pessimistic person like this. Like, oh, goddamn, this is it. The Armageddon's coming. You know, it's over. Uh, we're all going to be broke forever. You, did you have that experience? Of course. Dude, I, I thought, this is it. Okay, I'm going back to living on the streets or something. So I'm very dramatic, right? So... um, I said, Jared, let's rechop the video. I got to do something. I can't, I can't sit here. The whole world's going to stop. So I started shooting new video while we shoot new content. I market the content while I'm shooting it. So I go live on Instagram and say, Hey guys, check out what I'm doing. Da da da. By the way, you can buy it. You can pre-buy it. Save yourself half. I'm a pitchman. I'm a promotion guy. I'm, I'm going to sell my products. I'm going to convert and monetize my customers. So I start doing this and some kid in the live comments says, I can't wait to watch you fucking go broke. And I saw it. And it, and unfortunately, I, I took the bait, you know? And I said, yeah, Jared, I'm going bankrupt, okay? And I took the bait. And the next thing you know, I start jacking with Jared saying, I'm losing everything. And I start telling the audience, guys, by the way, if you haven't heard, first person in here, and I just slide off into this very immature rant about how I'm going broke. I'm going to lose the plane. I'm going to lose the apartments. I'm losing everything. I'm losing the condo. This is, swear to God, the truth, okay? 24 hours later, I have a FedEx package at my condo. I'm a buyer with an offer, $4 million. I get a phone call from, what's her name that runs? Uh, oh, yeah, Todd Wanick says, hey, hey, Todd Wanick runs Ashley Furniture. Todd's like, hey, man, I think you're fucking around, but he texts me, I think you're fucking around, but uh, in case you're really selling the Gulfstream, I will buy it. <laughs> I get, I get every vulture coming out. Just I get, like, oh yeah, they, they came out of the, 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 yeah. the, this is the first of it. I get another That's call amazing. from uh, Market America. Um, Lauren Riddinger that runs Market America. They do a billion dollars of sales a year. Hey Grant, uh, we are definitely buyers for the Gulf Stream. Like, like people that will never talk to me, just wham, we're here. They're watching all this stuff. These are voyeur, uh, on, voyeurs on the on social platforms. Like we, we learned this, the best quality people in your ecosystem are not following you. Uh, I was with, uh, I are was not, they following? do not follow you, but they watch you. They're not followers. They don't like, they don't comment. I was in Atlanta. I went to Atlanta, Dallas, and well, in Phoenix, we were looking at real estate with CBRE. We looked at about 4,000 units in Atlanta, looked at another 6,000 in Dallas. I'm in at the Starbucks in Atlanta. And a guy walks up to me. He's like, I'm with, uh, who is the big group? CMI. I mean, big, big, massive, uh, $500 billion company. Uh, MetLife. He's like uh, $590 billion or something. He's like, man, I love all your shit. You could tell he's all dressed. He's very corporate. I'm like, you follow me on Instagram? Oh, no, fuck no. I don't follow you, but I watch all your shit. Goldman, JP Morgan, like all the way to the top, top of the food chain. We know those people watch us. There's no chance that somebody is behind the motivation behind this John guy to push you in this direction. Is there, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, I'm a very Could there, could there be some, well, some secret plan to kind of take? No. 
Cardone down? Mm-mm. No, I think this this is this is. I mean, this is just my opinion. Just, just this is maybe a, another issue, another problem, some other problem. You've heard him. It doesn't make sense. So, so anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking about the followers, right? So, so anyway, so I'm on this video doing this bankruptcy thing. I'm like, yeah, guys, I'm losing everything. Well, those people started hitting us. Everybody saw that video. It was a complete joke. But what we really learned was the people that had been calling me a friend and acting like a friend fucking turned on a dime. It was shocking. It was so like, it was a revelation. How many people that will call you their friend that the moment you're in trouble or it looks like you're you in trouble? You mowed the grass and you saw the snakes. Yeah, dude. Like yeah. Jay-Z said, pigeons take flight. Wow. And they did. Well, I will give you this, Mr. Cardone. When I Before I met you, yeah. you have a, 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 a belief about who Cardone is. From the marketing. From I do this, or you do? I do. As oh, you a, had, as a you, viewer. You had a, yeah, as, yeah, a, as, a viewer. as a viewer. Yeah, as yeah, a viewer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm like, okay. Yeah, I do a terrible job at that, by the way. I, I, I know I create that problem, right? I could do a lot better. It's interesting. And that's what I was driving towards is as I got in your office and hung around and saw your staff and met your people and met your family and yeah. You start to realize just you're actually, uh, a, a, I don't even know if I want to say this out loud, kind of a humble type guy that actually is very soft, very kind, yeah. very heartwarming, very bring you in, give you a big hug. I yeah, thought yeah. you're going to always be abrasive, always be loud, over the top, kind yeah, of yeah, confrontational. Yeah. And it wasn't like that at all. It was very supportive. Yeah. And you want to see entrepreneurs yeah. win. And, yeah, I do, And man. people around you win. And yeah. you can see it by your team. The team is full of winners. And that en- that energy, that winning energy yeah. is yeah, everywhere. I like, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're authentic uh, and obviously very uh, uh, open. Yeah. To talk I'm about a grinder, dude. Down. I've been grinding. I've been grinding since I was a kid. And I'm still grinding today. And, I, and, I, and, and so, like, and I'm combative, too. Like, I don't mind fighting. So, um, you know, like, like even taking money from non-accredited people. I had a guy ask me today, he's like, why, why would you do that? I don't understand why you would take money from non-accredited people. I said, cause it's the right thing to do. He's like, yeah, but financially it doesn't work. Like he's a very astute guy. He's like, there, there's no financial upside in any model that would support you taking $5,000 from an individual. Because now I have to have an accounting department, a legal department, and distributions, and like register all that. And your data. belief system is just give the little guy an op- opportunity. Well, well, I get one percent of the five thousand. So what is that? Fifty bucks. Like I don't remember the last time I needed fifty dollars. Every time you raise money, you get one percent. I get one percent on the equity. We get a one percent management fee on the exit. So, um, but it's fifty dollars. Okay, I could go to Blackstone and say, I'll put in 10 million, you give me 100 million, boom, they do the deal. Today in this environment right now. Uh, but to me, and it might be stupid of me, but to me, it's the right thing to do to let my niece invest alongside with me or the non-accredited because I remember being non-accredited. I remember watching my, my mom as a, her entire life, she was non-accredited and she raised five kids. And she never got a shot. She never got a chance. She never got the good investments. And what we're buying at Cardone Capital, these are the best, highest quality, institutional quality investments you can buy. Probably the safest type of investment quality across the spectrum. And we're giving regular, everyday people a chance to invest alongside it. So all I'm saying to you is that it's the fighter in me for the little guy, you know, but but I never put that fighter to sleep. So like, I'm always fighting. I'm fighting like get, to get attention. I'm fighting for me, I'm fighting for my family. I'm going to fight this lawsuit. I'm just going to fight, you know, even when maybe I shouldn't fight. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks for coming by. Uh, and thank you for being transparent today. Thank you, I man. think a lot of people wanted to hear what you yeah. had to say. So I yeah. appreciate it. Um, guys, if you got a lot of value out of this, go follow Mr. Cardone. You're at Grant Cardone everywhere, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, go follow Grant. Uh, check out what he has going on. I'm at official Cody Sperber on Instagram. We're out of here. Until next time, take care. Comb your hair. Peace. <laughs> Hey, Cody Sperber, the original Clever Investor, host of the Clever Investor Show podcast, and I'm shooting this ad right now to let you know that this podcast exists. 
It's finally out and we have some amazing guests. So please, I'm begging you, can you just come and give our podcast a listen? I've been doing real estate for a really long time. I have access to some of the coolest people in the world. We were having all these amazing conversations and I'm like, what are we doing? Let's record this and actually put it out on a podcast. But the problem is, I have to let people know about it. That's where this ad comes in and this is where you come in. You're gonna be able to learn from successful entrepreneurs, get in-depth interviews from amazing leading experts. You're gonna learn real estate investing strategies and tactical training strategies that work in today's market. We're going over market analysis and different market predictions. You're gonna be able to engage in an awesome community. And we go into some pretty deep dives on the mindset of what it takes to win the game of money and in life, plus lots of bonus resources and exclusive content. So what you're gonna wanna do right now is click the link that you see on your screen and give the show a subscribe today. Today. We have amazing guests like Ken McElroy and Robert Kiyosaki and Wes Watson and Pace Morby and Jamil Damji and Vina Jetty and a whole host of amazing men and women entrepreneurs that you're gonna love to learn from and get to know. So what you wanna do right now is click that link and give the show a subscribe today.